Well, welcome everyone to All Things Ignatian. My name is Ryan Irving. I'm a junior here at Fordham Prep. I'm joined by Father Marchione. Welcome, Father. Good to be here. <laughs> and uh, basically, yeah, today we're just going to be talking about the upcoming Ignatian Heritage Week, which is an Ignatian year, although I'm sure you're somewhat more qualified than me to talk about that. I don't know. Well, that's why I'm wearing the collar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh my gosh! Yeah, thanks for having me, Ryan. Yeah, I appreciate no, it. You know, long time, long time, first time. <laughs> you know, be a part of the, uh, being part of the crew here at FPTV. And um, yeah, so we're starting off the Ignatian Heritage Week. Uh, so we're having this little conversation about kind of growing deeper in our Ignatian identity here at the prep. And yeah, and it's part of a larger Ignatian year. We were joking before the cameras were rolling that this is not just your average 365 slash six day year but it's about a year, about 14 months long. And the reason it's the Ignatian year this year, it started back in May of 21. In May 1521 is when Ignatius had his horrific uh, battle uh, uh, wound at Pamplona, right? He got the, the cannonball that smashed up his legs. And it was in March of 22, of 1622, when Ignatius and Francis Xavier, this is the best canonization draft class in history, because it was Ignatius, Xavier, Philip Neri, Isidore of Seville, and Teresa of Avila, who were all uh, canonized together. It's right. better than like the 89 NFL draft. Stack lineup. Yeah, no, that's, that's, a, that's a good starting five. Um, Ignatius was probably the point guard. <laughs> nah, he would have been a shooting guard. His former yeah. life, he would have been the shooting guard. He would have been a number two. So, uh, that, that, yeah, that's 400 years ago, right? Because we'll celebrate that in uh, this coming March. And then it'll end, obviously, on Ignatius Day, uh, July 31st, for those counting at home, uh, uh, this year uh, of 2022. And so it's really an opportunity to kind of grow deeper in our knowledge and love of the Lord. Ironically, it's the Ignatian year, but it really is going deeper into knowing Christ. And it, what we're doing is we're having an ability to kind of get to know his journey better and how we got to know Christ. And for someone who lived 500 plus years ago, yeah, I think there's still some commonalities uh, that we can, we can really learn from, some right. commonalities between then and now that yeah, we can really learn from. Right, yeah, yeah. And I know, like, as a freshman, I remember going in, the, you know, the summer going into my freshman year, uh, I had to work on a summer essay, like, kind of learning about St. Ignatius. That was my introduction into the whole Jesuit spirituality that we learned about here at Fordham. And I think it's so interesting how, like, we still have things that we can learn from him and admire about him. So I was just wondering, like, specifically to you, what do you, what do you think those things are? Yeah, no, that's a good question. And, um, you know, one of the things about Ignatius was, it's something that, that attracts me to Ignatius, um, is in his, before his, before his, his cannonball accident, uh, this is a guy who's really vain, uh, really ambitious. And so what you have is someone who has big dreams, big dreams about himself, someone who's clearly charismatic, someone who's a natural leader, very intelligent. Um, and then he has to start changing how he uses those gifts once he's had a life-altering experience. And that could happen to any of us, right? Yeah. Something, you know, something rough could happen, say, at home, in the neighborhood, in the world, I don't know, a pandemic. And <laughs> you know, things, we have, to, we have to pivot, we have to change. And one of my best friends looks at Ignatius as someone who's like, all right, he's the patron of now what? Right? right? Okay, so now I'm injured, all right, now what? Yeah. And a lot of Ignatius's story is him recovering from that, going, traveling all over the, the Mediterranean world uh, and trying to figure out who he really is. Mm -hmm. uh, and along the way, he finds some great friends like Francis Xavier, like Peter Faber. And that's how, they, that's how he starts the Society of Jesus, ultimately. Mm -hmm. But it goes through a lot of trial and error. And so for anyone watching at home or in the, their, you know, your groups, uh, in your classes here at school, you just know that God is still working with you and God is by your side and that a lot of life is that trial and error. And Ignatius had to figure that out. And his rules for discernment, his rules for figuring out how to make good decisions, comes from a lot of that. Yeah. And so, for example, the magis, right? Talking about the greater good, what's the better thing to do? If you're a high school, I don't know, junior, looking at colleges. <laughs> what? I don't know. I mean, if anyone in this room is a junior, I don't know. Um, you're starting to look at colleges. with well, a lot of good colleges. What's the better one for me? Right. Right. And that would be an example. And that's the trial and error stuff that, that Ignatius's experience, um, you know, helps us with. Mm -hmm. And I think that's just really cool because, you know, e even today it's inevitable. All people feel lost. All people, you know, it, not all people get struck by a cannonball, for sure. But, right, um, right. you know, people find things that, like obstacles in their lives. And I think you can look at a person like St. Ignatius and see, look how this person turned his life around and became such an important and inspiring figure. You can kind of bring that into your own life. So I guess, what is something that I can do in this upcoming 
Ignatian Week yeah. to say that I am a student who learns about Jesuit spirituality and I'm proud of that and I get to show that through this action. Ignatius uh, wrote, when he, was, when he was general, he was writing a lot of letters. He was an administrator, he was in his office all day. This is a guy who traveled all over the world, wanted to be a great missionary in the last 15, 16 years of his life. He was the CEO and he was in his office and now he was writing letters and he was directing guys here and there. Um, and one of the letters he wrote were to men in formation, so younger Jesuits, and talking about, yo, okay, I hear that, okay, it's very busy, tough to pray, yo, do not forget <laughs> your, next page, examine, don't forget the examine, if, if all else fails, and it's funny, I work at, I also work part-time at St. Ignatius School, and just yesterday, I do an examine to start every class with my students. And one of the students said, Father Marchioni, we do the same thing every day. And I'm like, good, because you got to get into that routine. You got to let it, you got to let it kind of sink in. And so I think it's so good that the prep does an examine, uh, certainly at the end of the day. Uh, and I really want to encourage students, take it seriously, five steps. It's so simple. It's the same thing every day, but every day is different. So it's going to, it's going to change. And just thanking God for something that happened in the day, ask the Spirit to give you a hand. Find just one key moment of the day, something that sticks out at you, and just try to review it, see how you felt, where was God and all that. Ask God for some forgiveness for when we mess up. We always do. It's no big deal. God will forgive us. And then the last part is, what do you need for the next day? Mm -hmm. And if you just keep those basic, that, that sort of basic stuff down, um, uh, that sort of basic spirituality, very simple, you just keep doing that exam and uh, you'll be able to see God uh, uh, closer, you know, in your right. life more and more at work and be able to kind of be like Ignatius and be like, all right, well, now what, God? And free to move mm -hmm. from there. And I think to me, like, one of the most inspiring things about St. Ignatius is prior to being struck by the cannonball, like, he was a man who didn't really have a strong relationship with God, you know? And I think that for a lot of people listening, you know, not everyone is religious and not everyone uh, can say that they feel strongly connected to God. So I guess, what would you say to people who might not know how to find what St. Ignatius found, you know, and how can I connect with God in the same way that St. Ignatius did, even though he might not have felt that connection before getting struck. Yeah, no, and you know, Ignatius had to go through a real hard time uh, in order to really have a sense of God. You know, for me, I, I can only speak for myself here, I, I can't, um, it'd be hard for me to talk to, you know, to give that sort of advice, you know, right. um, kind of generally. Um, you yeah, know, everyone has their own story. Mm -hmm. um, my story, I would say, you got to look where, you got you to go to the cross. Uh, St. Paul writes, um, you know, I preach Christ and Christ crucified. And the cross is the location of, um, is the location of transformation. The cross is where Christ hands over the spirit in John's gospel. And I would also then say, Ignatius has a really good image that you can use from the spiritual exercises. As you look at a crucifix, keep it real simple again. You don't have to do highfalutin crazy stuff. You know, you don't have to be meditating and levitating for like three hours without, you know, breathing or something. Real three, three simple questions. What have I done for Christ? What am I doing for Christ? And what will I do for Christ? And looking at the crucifix is that area of greatest need. You know, Christ dying, right? Area of big need. Um, in our own lives, where my, er, my area of need, or if there's someone who I really care about, my friend, my classmate, if I'm a teacher, right, this is for the teachers too, if I'm a parent, if you're watching on YouTube, um, my child, my student's greatest need, and am I really giving myself over to that person, right? And it's there in those moments where I can always find God. Hmm. And like, should I say always? I shouldn't always say always like that, but you know what I'm saying, that's where I can, that's where I can find God, right? right. And that's where I would invite people into. If maybe their relationship with the Lord is a little lukewarm or it's not really there or, or what have you. Okay, where is their great need? I think that's why uh, we have such a robust service program here at the prep. Mm -hmm. Go where that need is, you'll find God there. Mm -hmm. We reflect back on the experience, we do your examine, and then we, bit by bit, grow in our relationship with God. Yeah, and then you know another thing that I want to mention is like something that I've learned through my education here in Ignatian spirituality is that one of the pillars of that spirituality would be finding God in all things, like we were just talking about before. And I would just, you know, like ask you, what do you think is the beauty of that kind of statement, you know, finding God in everything, not just in church, not just um, when you're talking with the priest, but like in, in all aspects of your life, what, what is the beauty of finding God? Yeah, you know, that's a good one, man. I'm, I'm thinking, um, I'm not a nature guy, others are. Um, <laughs> the outdoorsy stuff for me doesn't work so much unless I'm down the shore. 
like a real mm. Philadelphian. And, <laughs> and if I'm on the beach and I feel the sun's rays and I feel the rhythm of the waves coming and I could hear that, that's, that's, an, that's one example of sort of the standard sort of nature reply. You know, where you're like, no, there's something huge here and I'm kind of at the mercy of something so much bigger than me. Yeah. And it's so beautiful, it's so perfect. Everything is right in balance, right? Um, which, is, which is great. Um, but I, I love cities, I'm a city guy. I love being in the Bronx. You know, I love just when I'm driving to and from, say, St. Ignatius School and, and Rose Hill here, or I'm going to a parish call, or, you know, I head out somewhere, or I'm taking the bus, and just seeing the people, right? Seeing the neighborhood, seeing people in their day-to-day, -day, uh, people just crossing the street, people on the bus, things like that. You realize that we're all in this together in some way. You know, that's certainly a way that I can look back in my exam and be like, yeah, that was a beautiful moment, you know, mm -hmm. a beautiful moment. Um, so just, yeah, allowing ourselves to, I, I, there's, a, there's a phrase out there, being surprised by God, right. uh, and just God kind of showing up in different places. Yeah. And it's in those moments where you feel greater faith, hope, and love, greater connection to people. Um, that can happen anytime, anywhere. Mm -hmm. And in terms of like finding God, you know, Ignatius was lucky enough to have found God after being struck by the cannonball in one of his lowest moments. But... You know, I think, unfortunately, there are a lot of people who find low moments in their lives and can't say that they were able to find God, even though they yeah. believe that God is truly with them always. So I guess, what would you say to people who might feel as though, you know, they're at a lowest point in their life, there's huge obstacles in front of them, but they can't seem to find God in the same way that, say, Ignatius did? Hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's again, that's one where you're, I, really want to, I really want to know that person and their particular right. situation. Right. I think sometimes words don't do justice. Um, sometimes, you know, what's that phrase? Talk is cheap, right? So, I mean, like, you know, God's got your back. But if you're not feeling it, like, if you're down, if you're down, you know, there's no words I can really say, right. ultimately. It ain't going to be me talking. Mm -hmm. It's going to be their experience of the Lord. But I think what can happen then is we, when we rally around each other, with each other, around someone, if we're constantly accompanying, Pope Francis um, always has really, really brought this back in the church of accompanying other people, right. uh, just being there with people, know, then they know that they're not alone. They know that they're cared for. And that's an action of God. And whether they feel that or sense that, that's between them and God. Mm -hmm. um, but what we can do is simply be there with them. Um, um, just to let them know there's a community here. The church is a community. Uh, right. and, and in that they can, sense, they can sense the Lord. You know, a quick, quick story about Ignatius. Uh, Ignatius, obviously, so he was 30 years old when he had his legs broken. He, goes back, he has to go back to school after all of this, right? He has to go back to school. And so never. he's in his, he's probably about my age, right? Mid 30s. And he's in school with like fourth and fifth graders. Right. It's like Billy Madison. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> if you've seen that movie. Man, I'm so nervous. I mean, first and second grade were easy, but social studies, division, this is going to be tough. And, uh, yeah, God's there. Mm -hmm. he's, he's, he's humiliated, right? Because he's got to get his basic Latin down. You know, a mo, a mas, <laughs> a mat. A uh, girl who... One, 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 he can't even read. You know, with these little, you know, 10-year-olds, you know, throwing 15th, 16th century spitballs. And, uh, but God's there in that. Mm -hmm. You know, so even, again, in those, those humbling moments, um, being uplifted, that's Ignatius. Ignatius really, really, I mean, really do a, first, you know, for you guys, really do a close reading of the autobiography. And look how unstable Ignatius was after his, after the, um, after his trauma. Uh, look at how much he suffered and realizing that no matter what, God's going to get you out of that. Right. And he just keeps looking for God and keeps reacting. And, and again, trial and error. But, um, you know, we know with the Lord, there's always a, there's a good ending. Yeah, definitely. All right, well, thank you so much, Father, I appreciate for coming it. on today. You know, if there's one thing I took, it's St. Ignatius is definitely the shooting guard, for sure. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, but thank you so much. Uh, it was a great interview. Uh, I think... You know, I was so happy to learn more about the Ignatian Week, and hopefully everyone listening was also happy to learn. Um, so thank you again, Father. Thank you all for listening, and have a great Ignatian year. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.